The opposition may say this uh, the previous amendment allowed for experience or seniority or leveling the playing field. We don't remedy this by giving in on our core principles, and our platform is our core principle. Join me in fighting for the grassroots. Join me in fighting this backdoor attempt to soften our platform. Join me in fighting the establishment. Join me in fighting the rhinos. Thank you, sir. I'll now take the uh, white light, which is number four. If the delegate will please identify themselves as Senatorial District and the uh, nature of the interrupting action. Rebecca Williamson, SD 24. I would ask clarification from Mr. Crocker as to the rationale of the decision of the Rules Committee on this motion. Thank you, Rebecca. And I'd like to point out, Rebecca is one of our retiring SREC women, so thank you very much for your service. And Bill, if you're inclined, if you could answer. I'll try to be very brief. Uh, two or three points need to be made in response to this very legitimate question. Number one, and first and foremost, uh, I told the committee, I told you, assembled here two years ago, that if you changed this, it would not apply to me. It will not apply to me. It cannot apply to me. Uh, so I, I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you is anything but self-serving. I want to serve you. I want you to be served as effectively and, and, and as, as completely as you can be served. I've invested eight years and a lot of money and a lot of day-to-day of -day time in, in building relationships with people in the RNC. Uh, I've, we, I've, had, I've had a fair measure of success in, in, in rising up the, uh, the food chain of the RNC, if you will, but now every bit of that investment is lost to you. Uh, you don't have, you're going to have, somebody's going to have to start over. And that's fine, but don't impose that upon yourself. Uh, if you have somebody who is representing yourself, you well. Let them keep doing it. Don't automatically or unilaterally disarm. I'm a Texan. I'm a fifth generation Texan. Nobody is more proud of Texas than I am. I hate to see Texas not be successful. And if you want to handcuff yourself in this, man in this manner, you will not be as successful as you can be potentially. I'm just not organized but today. Running, trying to get here from getting food. So. This is the ultimate on the level playing field. But the lady who has the top more seniority in the Republican National Committee is not running for the election this year after I believe she has been there for 40 years. She, I think, was 26 when she was first elected. And she knows everybody and everything. And she knows how to get it done for the state of Delaware. Uh, I, at the same time, I caution the committee, don't do this. Use the we had a discussion about this. Don't change term limits. Go back to your caucus and, and use the next two years to educate people, to, to sell, sell the program, if you will. They came back last night, said that they had been to each of their caucuses, and almost unanimously said, you know what, our people told us to make any difference put this in there that we're taking the term limits out. And so that's what presented to you. That is the rationale for that. Uh, I think, personally, you want my opinion, I think Texas will be a whole lot better equipped for the long haul at the RNC if you don't have term limits. That's what I Microphone one is opposed. Please state your name and send for a 
Chairman Ministry, my name is Earl Carter, Senate District 5. I'm speaking in opposition to this amendment. Folks, every one of us is sick of our presidential primary process, and we never have a say in you know, what who our presidential nominee is. If we're ever going to fix it, we can't hang ourselves with our own rules. We need, if we're going to have term limits, they need to be universal time limits that apply across the board to everybody in the United States, in the whole party. Thank you. Thank you. And may I just make an error? Please forgive me if it's late. I'm getting a little tired. Actually, that should have been a green. So since I've taken two reds in a row, basically, I'll, I'll balance it out by taking two greens in a row. The uh, microphone four is a green, uh, which would be in favor of the amendment to, to the amendment to the amendment. Please proceed. Identify yourself from Senator District. John Gordon, Senate District 5. I am supporting the motion to not strike the term limits, to leave the term limits in, which is I'm supporting the amendment to the main motion to uh, change the language. Uh, the purpose of the uh, this uh, term limits was decided over multiple state conventions. I've been a delegate since 1980, and there was good reasons to support that philosophy and to do that to increase the amount of leadership that we had in development. That's point one. Point two, if we'd have had term limits over the last few years, we would have lost good people that have had a chance to go up there and give their ideas, fresh ideas, and serve and bring back to us the information of what's going on our NRC. I will tell you that if we accept the premise that we have to have people there for long terms, whoever we elect as national committee man this year, we're telling the 2016, 2020, and the 2024, do not mess with our choice today, because only if he's there 12, 16 years will he ever be affected. I reject that premise. The third point is we are the state of Texas. We are the largest successful state Republican Party in the nation. When we send our representatives as national committee man and committee woman, they should be treated with utmost respect and given as much authority based on who we are and who we send, because we send the top people. And to say that we have to have term limits and go against our own philosophy because of the rules of the NRC, the Republican National uh, Committee there, that's backwards. Let's stand with our philosophy and change the problems that are inherent with the Republican National Committee. Thank you. That speaker actually should have been a red light. I'll take responsibilities because of the contribution I created previously. But that actually is three reds in a row, which are people. <laughs> No, no, I'm right, because he was talking in favor of Bill Proctor's amendment, Mr. Zimmerman. No. But the amendment to the amendment reinstitutes term limits. That's right. I thought he was talking against term limits. No. Oh, he's in favor of term limits. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess he didn't persuade me, because I thought he had to pay me the other way. <laughs> Now we will do a second green in a row, which is somebody to speak in favor of the amendment to the amendment, which is Mr. Zimmerman's amendment, which would basically restore it. So I will, by the way, I failed to mention Mr. Zimmerman also just left the SREC. If we could give him a round of applause. For his <laughs> Don, you don't know this, but I met her mother in the elevator this morning. She's very proud of me. Um, I will take uh, microphone one. I think that's a green light, which would be somebody speaking in favor of Mr. Zimmerman's amendment to the amendment. Please proceed. State your confirm district uh, in your name. This is uh, Dan Higgins, SD16, and I too just got term limited out of the SREC. 
And I failed to mention, since you've been up five times, that not only are you a member of the SREC, but you've been a wonderful uh, chairman of our rules committee. Thank you for your service. years. The whole reason we started this whole trend of putting term limits in was because of the issues that we saw in various places, including even the state legislature, where we'd like to see, I'm not the state legislature, but the federal uh, Congress, where we'd like to see term limits. He is exactly correct. We turn around and we say something in the platform, and now Bill wants to remove, our Bill and the committee, not necessarily Bill, and the committee wants to remove the RNC for a reason specifically to say we need to get more and more um, friendly or move up on some area inside of the RNC committee-wise to make a difference. Personally, I think exactly what should happen. The RNC itself should be persuaded that the best thing to do is to also institute term limits. Have Colonel and some of these more things to in across the board, and I wouldn't mind seeing them instituted in both the House and the Senate. Thank you. Thank you. There is a white light claiming an uh, inter intervening action, uh, so I'm going to, is that green or white? Red or green. I have really bright lights on me right now, so it's making the greens look like whites. Is that a white up there? In four? They're both green. I'm going to just have to ask you to tell me that. All right, so we've had two greens in a row, so I'll go now to a red, which would be up in uh, uh, number two. Delegate, please identify yourself as your senatorial district, and then you may proceed. Mr. Chairman, my name is Cindy Ash from Senatorial District number eight. Yes, you may I'm proceed. speaking in opposition to the amendment. And in the interest of full disclosure, I should let you know that I know the National Committee man extremely well. You see, he's my father. And I have to tell you that we could not be more proud of this gentleman and the way that he has conducted himself over the last eight years and the honor that he has brought to Texas and our family. Now, in terms of the amendment, I've had the opportunity to travel to RNC meetings to accompany my father and see how things are done on the RNC level. Unfortunately, I am for term limits in all situations, almost every situation with the exception of this one. And that is because Texas is allowing itself to lose its influence in the national arena. If we ever want to have a party primary where we have a say and where our candidate is not chosen for us, in advance of the, our primary election, we need a national committee man who is allowed to stay and be influential in the RNC. This, as Mr. Johnson said, is unilateral disarmament because no other state requires its national committee man or committee woman to be term limited. So this would be like giving all of our weapons away and telling the other folks, come and take it, here it is. Texas needs a we national have a committee a battle man that took and place committee like that. woman come and who get can it, the stay cannon. and fight for Texas. Thank you, Ms. Ash, and Bill, I have a suspicion I know where she got her genetic material to be so articulate. She takes after her mother. <laughs> there is a motion which I will recognize on uh, microphone two. The delegate will please 
State your name and their senatorial district and state your motion. Rick Weaver, Senate District 12. I call for the question of all the questions on the table. There's a motion to call all the questions, which would then cover both the amendment and the amendment and the amendment. Is there a second? All those in favor of calling the question, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. The ayes have it. We're going to move now with Mr. Zimmerman's amendment to the amendment, which basically restores term limits. Does everybody know what we're voting on? All those in favor of Mr. Zimmerman's amendment to the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. I can't tell. It may be easier for me with hands since some people shout louder than other people. All those in favor of Mr. Zimmerman's amendment to the amendment, please raise your hand. Oh, goodness. If you'll put those down, please. All those opposed to the amendment to the amendment, please raise your hand. I think it's pretty clear to many counsel. So the amendment to the amendment fails. We then have the amendment. So everybody know what we're voting on? We're now voting on the amendment that basically takes away the term limit. Correct? All right. So for the RNC. So all those in favor of the amendment. Let's do it by hands this time because I think it was too tough last time. So everybody that is in favor of the amendment, Mr. Crocker's committee proposed, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. If you could put your hands down. And all those opposed? No. And the ayes clearly have it. The amendment fails. The chair recognizes Mr. Crocker for the purpose of proposing the amendment. Mr. Chairman, members of the convention, delegates to the convention, the direction of the committee. Can we please have order and give Mr. Crocker your attention, please? By direction of the committee, I move the adoption of a single amendment which encompasses a group of non-substantive changes which include renumbering and relettering. Mr. Crocker, could you just briefly explain that so people know what they're voting on? This is housekeeping, and it was an authorization to clean up grammatical and style errors, particularly in numbering the paragraphs or the subsections of each of the rules. It does nothing more than that. And frankly, had we had time, we would have done that for you in this draft. But because different authors have written different rules and they have been incorporated into the body of your rules, sometimes you will see Rule 1, Section ABC. Other times you will see Rule 1, Section or Rule 10 or whatever, Section 1, Section 2, Section 3, Subsection 1, Subsection 2, Big A, Little A, and there's no consistency. We can do better than that. So that's what this, that's all this is about. Thank you, Mr. Crocker. I see a white light. The chair will recognize the delegate on Microphone 3 that has the white light. If you have an intervening action, please state your name, Senator Earl District, and the nature of the intervening action. Yes, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jacob Thomas. I'm from SD10. I just have a point of inquiry. I know this is probably going to be ruled out of order, but I just want to be clear that on the last thing we voted on, that we voted against term limits. I just want to be clear. Yes, I think everybody pretty well got that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, now, we have a motion before the body. Would anybody like to be heard on the motion before the body? Oh, there's a motion, a motion on Mic 2, I'm told. I see it. Delegate, please state your 
Your name, your senatorial district, and your motion. Uh, John Van Neel, uh, Hood County, uh, Senatorial District 22. I have a parliamentary inquiry. Is it now in order to offer a motion to reconsider? On the term limit? No, uh, the time to do it was before you moved to the next motion that was introduced, so no. Uh, I don't see anything else. So, if, and I don't see any lights of anybody that wants to be heard on this particular amendment by Mr. Crocker, so we'll go for the question. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Chairman, that concludes the report of the permanent uh, rules committee. I think Mr. Crocker can let the rules go far. I think he deserves a standing ovation. I said for that service for eight years on the RNC. Anybody who puts up with the rest of the RNC for eight years deserves at least one standing ovation. I promise I'm standing. I promise I'm standing. <laughs> Sorry? So, so I promise I'm standing in front of you. Let me thank you all and tell you that two things quickly, and then I'll get out of here and let you get on with, with more work. Number one, uh, this chairman has established such a rapport with everybody who works up here that I would dare to walk over and pat him on the back and tell him what I thought the ruling was or what something was intended. You don't do that with most chairmen. Most chairmen are too talking uh, to allow that. <laughs> this one is not. Great. Now, for those of you... This has been a delightful team to work with. Now, for those of you who didn't get to hear the news about the last 30 minutes or hour or so, I want to give you some late-breaking information that you will find fascinating, I hope. They have finally discovered a bona fide, real, shovel-ready federal project. <laughs> it is cleaning out the White House. Our next order of business is the uh, report of the Permanent Platform Committee. <laughs> I've lost my parliamentarians. <laughs> The chair and I are confused on how we can be out of order when we haven't gone to the next order of business yet. So you can't have possibly have a point of order in order until you're the next item of business. So what we'll do is we'll move to the next item of business and then if somebody has Well, let me get to the platform and then you can make your motion. <laughs> it, yeah, it's not. He's ready to go to bed. Yeah, yeah, hold on a second, sir. We, uh, we, you, you have to do this according to Robert's rules, and when you finish one item of business that's on a pre approved agenda, you have to wait till you get to the next item of business before you start objecting. So I'm just going to do that very quickly, and then you can make your objection. So at this time, uh, well, and this is what we're going to do. We're gonna Some people are too anxious. They're, they're ready to go. <laughs> they're ready to give their, 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 their two sets. Then if you have some objection, whatever it is, we'll be happy to hear it. I promise you'll get a chance to talk. I promise you that. So the chair recognizes Mr. Beckler, chairman of the Permanent Platform Committee, uh, for his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, delegates, alternates of the convention. I'd like to give you my report as the chairman of the Permanent Platform Committee. We had uh, an amazing group of people that labored tirelessly for the benefit of all of you. I'd like to recognize Mia McCord, who is our executive assistant. She is the chief of staff for soon to be Senator Kelly Hancock. And Teresa, yeah, and Teresa Kozlowski has served as our parliamentarian and has done an extraordinary job. 
I thought I'd begin my report by at least giving you more or less an update of how we began the process so that you understand a little bit more about the, the end product that we came up with. My charge to the committee, after consultation with many of the leaders uh, of the party as well as many of the pro-life and um, other conservative leaders throughout the state, was to attempt to reduce the size of our platform to make it more readable, to not intentionally reduce the planks, but to try and clean up some of the language. As such, the committee, the temporary committee, met for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We took open testimony in the subcommittees Monday and Tuesday, and we had one and a half hours of test public testimony on Wednesday. Um, everybody that showed up to speak in those three days, as it worked out, was given the opportunity to address either the temporary committee, um, either the uh, temporary subcommittees, or the temporary committee itself. We started uh, we, the motion before the committee was what work product would they like to start with, and the motion was made and approved to start with the 2010 platform. So that became the basis of the work that the committee progressed with. There's six sections to the committee, uh, to the platform. We had six subcommittees. I offered to each of them, told them that they would have that piece that they would work on and ask their opinion with respect to the preamble and the legislative priorities at the end. The, common, the, the consensus of that group of leaders was to let the committee as a whole handle those two sections and we would go, they would each work on their own. All of you, many of you, were involved in the process of going to a county or district convention, and your reports were consolidated electronically and given to all the members of the committee. There was an excess of a thousand pages that was generated and transmitted uh, to the state party that was delivered to the platform committee. As such, let me just say the 2010 platform was reviewed in its entirety. All those pages were reviewed in their entirety, and we had public testimony, as I mentioned to you. The permanent committee, excuse me, after, after electing the permanent members of the committee in these SD caucuses, we met yesterday from 8 p.m. to 9.45, and we also provided one half hour of public testimony at that session. Let me just give you as a point of reference, the 2010 platform is 32 pages, has 268 planks. The proposed platform in front of you, the 2012 proposed platform, has 22 pages and has 269 planks. Just to also to mention, due to the effort to clean up some of the language, members of the committee have suggested that I mention to you that their request is that you would please read it because there was a sensitivity that uh, maybe some people felt like we were cutting a lot of stuff out of the platform, but we would just, they had just asked that I suggest you to be sure to read the document itself. Things in the platform are handled a little differently than the rules. There is not a strikeout, underlying approach. It is a fresh new document according to the parliamentarian. That's, a, that's how we proceeded. So that's why you have a new document. It's not handled the way that the rules committee handled it. So at this time, Mr. Chairman, the 2012 Republican Party uh, the permanent committee has asked that I submit to you for approval. The permanent platform, uh, the permanent party platform, the 2012 platform, has been made available to the delegates. All of you should have a copy. At the direction of the committee, I move the adoption of the 2012 Republican Party platform. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mackle. It doesn't require a second because it's coming from a committee. Before we get on the platform, if I could lay some ground rules, please. The most important function of this convention is the platform. So I understand and appreciate, embrace, and think it's wonderful that people have passion and emotions may even get high. And that's okay. The only thing I ask is well, don't let any that passion in here? at any time become discourteous or personal or not personal. We are supposed to be a party based on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah. And I think Caroline of those 
And with respect to anybody else's religion, I'm just speaking of my own, which is a Christian. Every Christian church I've ever been to says we're supposed to treat each other with respect, with love, to try to guide your life into Christ instead of God. Keep that in mind as you're addressing your fellow delegates. Please do not shout out at people. Please do not do that at each other. I think most people would agree that when we have a respectful civil debate, it's been kind of a wonderful thing this afternoon. And let's keep it that way. We don't all have to agree on everything. We're not all going to agree. There's going to be some people that go home bad on something. That's just democracy. Come back in two years and try to get a change. Is that fair enough, folks? With that, we will proceed with the consideration of the platform. I promised those that had point of orders that they wouldn't be ignored, so I will honor that commitment and go to the gentleman at microphone number four. Uh, if the delegate will please state your name, your senatorial district, uh, and your point, uh, actually it doesn't have to be a point of order, but your intervening action. Mr. Chairman, Nelson Spear, Senate District 31, I have an interrupting motion. Yes, sir. I hereby move to suspend the current rules to allow the respected and honored Texas Land Commissioner, Jerry Patterson, to address this group regarding the platform as just presented by Mr. Beckler. All right, and let me, is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Let me explain uh, what's going on with uh, the significance of that motion. Oh, that's a Only delegates are normally allowed to speak to other delegates because those are the rules. But you can always suspend the rules. So if there is a non-delegate, which in this case is Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson, uh, he wants to address the body, apparently I'm either in favor of or in opposition to all or part of the platform, he can be allowed to do so, but only if two-thirds of this body they are. say it's okay for Land oh, Commissioner Jerry Patterson come speak to us. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Right. So that is a motion. Is it debatable? It's not debatable. The motion to allow Jerry Patterson is not debatable. So we will move forward right now with a vote on the motion. Two-thirds is required. I'll try a voice vote. Uh, if I can tell, if not, we'll just show our hands. All those in favor of allowing Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson to address this body, please simplify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? No! We're going to have to do hands. I think there's a majority, but I can't tell if it's two-thirds. So all those in favor of letting him address the body, raise your hands. Well, it looks like two-thirds, but let's keep them up a second. Let's put them down. All right, if you put those down, please. Really? All those that are opposed to uh, affording uh, Commissioner Patterson a chance to address the body. Uh, I think it's clearly two-thirds. So, is Commissioner, is Commissioner Jerry Patterson in the building, or is this sometime later he wants to speak? I might want to call for a point He's of order here. or a point of information yeah, yeah, on this one. Mike, come on. uh, first of all, welcome Commissioner Jerry Patterson. <laughs> and, and before you say anything, Commissioner, I have a point of personal privilege. I spent about 10 days with him in Iowa carrying his badge. He was the star. Uh, working for Fred Thompson. John McCain was about our 12th choice. Uh, and he's the most delightful. Fred I should have said that. I'm a party chair. <laughs> uh, but as part of the Go Fred Go, and he's one of the most delightful human beings I've had a chance to get to know a little bit. So, Commissioner Pat Patterson, welcome, and we look forward to hearing your remarks. Uh, you can have the same four privileges right now as another delegate, which is um, three minutes of, of speech. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Jerry Patterson from Senate District 25. I'm a uh, I'm commissioner of the Texas General Land Office. I'm a retired Marine. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm the author of Texas Concealed Handgun Law. And I, am, and I am a conservative. And I want to talk about something in the platform having to do with the immigration plank. I would like to submit to you that the immigration plank and border security go hand in hand. Let me first say, before I talk about the plank, that I support voter ID. I support English first. 
I support a military presence along the border when needed. Woo! I support a physical barrier, including a fence where it's tactically called for. I oppose our current policy of unconditional birthright citizenship. I oppose bilingual ballots. I oppose restrictions on law enforcement that would stop them from asking a question about someone's immigration status during an apprehension or investigation of a crime. I oppose amnesty. But what I, was I doing like that amnesty that business. I very loudly, firmly, and with great that. fervor support <laughs> is a guest worker program. Give a little bit of humor in here. We're all kind of people had a long day. So. We have folks in this country who are here to do us harm. They are criminals. They are coyotes. They run things back and across the border, whether they're illegals or whether they are drugs or other contraband. <laughs> and we also have folks in this country who want to work hard, pay their taxes, obey our laws, and there is no way for those to come here and do that lawfully because our immigration system is broken. We need a guest worker, temporary guest worker program that is in the immigration plaque of our platform, but I would hope you would favorably consider that, and thank you for the few minutes to address the convention. Very well. There is a white light which could be an interrupting motion or action, so I will recognize it on uh, microphone one if the delegate will state their name, senatorial district, and their intervening action. Thank you, Chairman Ministeri. My name is Timothy Smith, Senate, Dis uh, Senate District 22, Hood County. I'd like to commend you on your remarks opening this session and to build on those, noticing how there is almost half of the empty seats in this delegation at an unscheduled session of the general session to vote on the platform I would like to move in the honor of a recess so that those delegates tomorrow morning can represent and not disenfranchise any voters. Oh, no. I want to move for a recess of the platform until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning's general session. Thank you. Everyone is here and they're told to right. be here. Want to just, I want to clarify something. It was scheduled, it was moved, it was motioned, and I also want to inform people it will be a logistical nightmare because tomorrow you have to redo the whole thing by congressional district and more by senatorial district. I don't. I simply don't know how we'll do it. But as I look around this room, it's about as full as it was this afternoon. I just make that observation. Is there a is there a second to that motion? There is a second. Does anybody wish to speak on a motion to recess? That's not debatable. All those in favor of recess, by say aye. Opposed? No! Recess tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess the right, there is a uh, yeah. what? I guess the uh, 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 call for uh, a sorry, motion for a forum and see if that happens. Delegate, please state your name, your senatorial district, and your motion. I mean, I am sure I can have the chairman. I'm what's left of Gary Hill. Senate District 3. I'd like to make a motion to move to the defending sovereignty and home and abroad section of the platform immediately. But what is the motion? To move to the defending sovereignty at home and abroad section of the platform immediately. I'm not quite sure. You want to change something in it? Just tell us where. He oh, he, we oh, he wants to start there. Okay. Yeah. Is that how we go? Well, I don't think so. We're, we're debating the whole platform. If you have a motion, if have, part of the this one I think is a motion. You have to just go straight to it and tell where it is. And you don't need a motion to move to the discussion of a particular yeah, item right. in the platform. You can move right now for that discussion. Okay. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Right. Did you wish to speak on that portion of the No, I'm happy. It's no problem. I understand some of y'all knew this. It's no problem. Thank you very much. 
and I will, I will yield you the microphone and we won't start, we won't count your other time as part of the three minutes. Please feel free to address that portion of the platform uh, either in favor or against. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we need to address the immigration section of the platform immediately. It has been rushed through two times. Immigration or defendants targeting in the plan? In committee, due to time, oh, it's a subsection. Okay. And due to the 5 p.m. deadline today, it doesn't need to be delayed any longer. All right, thank you. I will take those comments as being against the platform. All right, so at this point, uh, I'm looking to see if anybody's for the platform. I think I see a white light in microphone number four. If, uh, since that might be a intervening action, the chair will recognize the yeah, delegate. Please yeah. state your name in the central district and state the nature of your interve yeah. intervening yeah. action. We appreciate it. Plan to test day, State District 4. A move that we limit today on the main motion uh, for the rest of the evening to five minutes. Okay, well, just so y'all know out there, moving a motion is not a white light. Any motion, if anyone to move something, that's a blue light, and it causes you to move in front of somebody else that maybe you shouldn't move in front of. So we'll go ahead and accept that as a blue light motion. Let me see the parliamentarian. Do any of the lights over there have filters? Do I know which a color? point of clarification uh, I think they for the motion. Motion. I think they're all white over Are you there. talking about five minutes per issue or five minutes for the entire platform? Five minutes per issue. Okay, I understand. Well, we have three minutes now, don't we? Our, our rules require that we allow a reasonable amount of time. That could be a ruling from the chair. I would rule five minutes for the entire platform to be unreasonable as a matter of our rules. Five minutes per issue, I think, is debatable, so I'm going to let that motion come to the floor. If someone seconds it, they have a chance to debate whether or not you want to have debate. Oh, I am just told part of the motion to limit debate is not debatable, but I will let it come to the floor. <laughs> you all follow all that? <laughs> Please excuse me. I, you know, I, I've been here since Sunday, so anyways. There's, there's, there's a motion on the floor to limit debate, it's not debatable, to five minutes per issue on the platform. I would take that as per plank of the platform. Well, if you have a point of order, you need to go to the microphone. Now I see the white light, but there's also a blue one. All right, we'll take your point of order, sir. I'm sorry to be so dramatic about it, but uh, it's, the light's been on for a while. I'm sorry, sir. It's, it's really hard for me to see. And earlier, the white lights, what I thought were white lights were green lights, so sometimes in reverse, I think a green light is a white light. I understand, sir. Uh, I'm Ken Meisner, Senatorial District 10. I'm afraid that a motion has been left dangling and overlooked. Correct me if I'm not right, but I believe that the platform committee chairman moved that the platform be voted on and accepted. Subsequently, we had a suspension of the rules. I don't think we ever went back to that first motion, and now we are working on a subsequent motion. Please address I, that. I disagree, sir. When he makes the motion, it doesn't need to be seconded. It was on the, the floor, but that was a superseding motion to suspend the rules for the purpose of allowing somebody to debate on the motion that was on the floor. So I just disagree with you. But we have not addressed the original motion in any way. We're trying way. to. We also, I don't mean to be argumentative and, and if you no, have a point of order or a point of information, you have a point of inquiry, I'm answering it. No, point of order, order sir. Go ahead and say your point. Not one by one. But what's the point of order? And I overrule, sir. Thank you. Uh, I will say the white light, uh, which is number four.
Does the delegate have an intervening uh, motion? Now, one thing I do is there, there's I'm a requesting one. information on Bridget Byers from Senatorial District 1. Hello, she's awake. My question is that if we are only given five minutes per res uh, per item, then and we're allowed three minutes per person usually, does that mean that three one person gets three minutes and the one that opposes gets only two? I mean, I'm just well, I'm, I'm questioning. Yeah, and, and let me caution people: this is not debatable, so you can't use point of orders for uh, argument. However, taking it in good faith that that was not the intention, right? The way that we would, I would intend to do it is we would have a a stop clock go, and uh, if the first person for something speaks a minute, then the other speakers have four minutes. If they speak for three minutes, they have two minutes. But that's something that you need to take into account when you vote on this, but it is not debatable. And we, we have Thank a motion you. on the floor. Does that help you? Yes, okay. All right, now we're gonna vote on the motion to limit debate for a platform plank to five, I, I, I will take it to mean five minutes on each side of the issue um, of the plank. The parliamentary corrects me that the motion was for the entire plank. Yeah. All those requires two thirds. So all those in favor of limiting debate total to both sides to five minutes per plank signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Noes have it. We will not limit debate under that motion. There is a. Is that? It's blue. <laughs> Neither. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember which blue one was up first. I think this one might have been not the wrong if I am excuse me. I will take um, you know, he has a good job. He has a pretty easy not, he's a reasonably busy job to does two. This is probably the busiest time he has. Nevada, Senate District 19. I like him. I'd like to make it a motion to add language to the Health and Human Services mandates blank on page P14. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the blank as it's currently written is generic. But we all know that what we're talking about here is President Obama's attack on the Catholic Church. And in an unprecedented move, the United States Council of Catholic Bishops uh, has stood strong against that and made it a request. For the parliamentarian informs me that you need to make your motion before you have the date. I move that we add the words, we stand with the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and their stand to defend religious liberty. Where do you want to insert that language? At the end of the plank. Uh, that's At the very two. What page? What line? And page P14 in the plank Health and Human Services Mandates. Add that sentence to the end of the plank. And just a reminder, you need to now reduce that in writing in two copies. And that what we can do while we're doing the debate is bring it up here to our secretary, please. Thank you. All right, is there a second for that amendment? There is a second. Would anybody like to be heard on that amendment? The maker of the motion has preference. Sir, did you want to speak on your own motion? I will speak briefly. Yes, Again, uh, I think this is uh, an unprecedented attack on religious liberty. Uh, we've had a bold move from the U.S. Catholic uh, Council of Bishops. And for those of us who are uh, uh, Catholic Americans, it would be very meaningful for the party to express its support in our struggle for religious freedom. Thank you, sir. I see a white language picking up the front door for an intervening action, so I will recognize microphone one, the white light, ask the delegate to state their name, their senatorial district, and the nature of their intervening action. The delegate is recognized for the intervening action, please. If you're not prepared, we're going to go to the next one. All right, we're going to go to the next person. The, we're going to go to, uh, there's another uh, blue motion over here. Uh, blue light for a motion, which is microphone three. That delegate is recognized for the purpose of a motion. Is the delegate still wish to make a motion? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. John Cologne, Senate District 1. There was a motion made previously to move, in the interest of our time, 
ahead to the same issue that we heard a speech about that's going to be contentious. So, what's your motion, motion to move to defending sovereignty at home of end abroad section for discussion? It's already up for discussion, sir. Let me explain the entire platform is up for discussion, so you don't have to move okay. any, anything. You just can My apologies. It's, it's okay. In other words, don't worry about it. Let's move on now. Okay. All right. So we have another motion over here, which is number one. You know, you, you are recognized for the purpose of the motion. The motion is out of order. So we we'll move to microphone number one. There's another motion. Because motions and points of order. I think people got to take precedent over the debate. So we have a motion. Remember, there's already a motion on the floor. Yes, so, sir. so if you're making a motion, it needs to be a motion addressing the motion. You have to have like an amendment to <laughs> yes, the motion. Sir. Yes, sir. So you're recognized by microphone one. My name is Aaron Hood, Senate District 9. I move to amend the amendment on the floor that if we recognize specific the Catholic Church, that we also recognize other religious associations that may choose to do similar actions. Oh, still. Sir, can you come back to the microphone for you to make the motion? You need to give us, and everybody, this goes for everybody from here on out because of the hour. We have, we're going to have to insist on following the rules pretty closely. You need to give us the actual precise language, word for word, the page, the line, and then when you're done, you need to reduce it from writing and duplicate and bring it to the secretary. Are you prepared to do that at this time, sir? I don't, I don't have the page right. or the line. Then we'll go, I'll have to come back to you. There is a, uh, and I would just ask everybody, before you come to the microphone, please be prepared. The uh, chair will recognize the motion up there on uh, microphone number two. There's a blue light. Oh, we still haven't gotten back to the sovereignty business. John Glenwood, SB8. I move we call the question. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of calling the question, which is to the amendment to the platform, please uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, ayes have it. So now we're going to move to the amendment, which uh, where they are interjecting the language on page that 14 um, that the delegate made. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Those have it, the amendment fails. All right, anybody else wish to be heard on the platform? There is a, a white light, which means a point of order and intervening action possibility on microphone two. I will recognize a delegate bringing the intervening action. Please state your name and your senatorial district. My name is Mark Bainter. I am Senate District 22. Just a question of parliamentary inquiry here. Sorry. Calling the question is not, uh, does not take priority over debate. Is that correct? We have people standing in line. It, it does. Waiting. No, that's not correct. It does take okay. priority. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Not a problem. All right. Um, is that green? All right, we have a green and a red, but we have some blues. So let me see if there's any motions on amendments first. So, um, microphone one is a blue. So the person with the motion will come to microphone one. Please state your name, Senatorial District, and the nature of the motion, please. My name is Judd Quarles. I'm from Senate District 1. My motion concerns the uh, part on illegal immigration on page P21. Um, so I how would we like get back to, to it? Make an amendment to that. Yes, sir. He'll state the specific language, page, and line, and then we request that we approve the motion. He'll sit down and write out two copies and bring it to Mandy. We would appreciate it. I will recognize you at this time for presenting the motion. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, the amendment I would like to make would strike the part about the Texas solution. It would replace it with the language from the 2010 platform. Which point? What? what is it? Um, the language the in the 2010 platform um, demands that, that would be basically the whole yeah, thing. You have to give us the exact language you want to put in there. It starts with the legal immigration plan. You're going to have to. You're going to have to read it. You can't refer people to another document. Okay. Um, starts with legal immigration. One nation, one flag, one language, one loyalty. 
America is a country of immigrants. We should insist oh, that any goodness. immigrant who comes here in good faith becomes an American and assimilates himself or herself to the United States. He or she shall be treated on an exact equality with everyone else. This is predicated upon the fact that the person is in every facet an American and nothing but an American. There can be no divided allegiance. Anyone who says he is an American but is something else also isn't American at all. We have room but for one flag, the American flag. We have room for but one language here, and this that is the English language. We have room for but one sole loyalty, and that is loyalty to the American people. And as far as illegal immigration, secure the borders now. With growing impatience, the American people in overwhelming numbers have asked our government to secure our borders. They now demand it, and we as a party agree with the American people. Illegal aliens have by definition violated U.S. law. We oppose illegal immigration, amnesty in any form leading to citizenship or legal status for illegal immigrants. We support an end to the catch and release policy, criminal penalties, and aggressive enforcement for those who knowingly employ illegal workers, expeditious hearings on deporting nonviolent illegal immigrants, amending the U.S. Constitution to suspend automatic U.S. citizenship to children born to illegal immigrants, elimination of federal and state funding to cities with sanctuary laws, empowering state and local law enforcement agencies with authority and resources to just detain have, illegal immigrants, such a late hour, rejection of non-verifiable foreign have to, have to issue cards as valid uh, identification, strict prosecution of any entity involved in phony but I commend identification him for his, you know, dedication. elimination of day labor work centers, elimination of laws requiring hospitals to give non-emergency care to illegals, elimination of social security benefits or federal and state from 2010. funding He's reading the paragraph that was there before. Housing and business loans, preventing any foreign entity from using our judicial system to enter the United States, document verification prior to issuance of a Texas driver's license, withholding federal really highway for funds for any state issued driver's license to illegal aliens. It's on Terry Kennedy's website, website right now, if you want to pull it up, humans if you need the internet right now. We support requiring all employers to utilize e-verify system to confirm the legal status of all new hires. Enforcement of immigration law, we support strict and immediate enforcement of all immigration laws. Birthright citizenship, we call on the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of these United States to clarify Section 1 of the 14th Amendment to limit citizenship by birth to those born to a citizen of the United States with no exceptions. We just need all of immigration from, from 2010. We, we, will, we will accept that, uh, we will accept that motion to amend. We would ask, just a housekeeping thing, that if somebody has a document that's written out, it would help Mandy if in advance of your coming up, if you know you're going to do that, to try to provide us a copy. But we appreciate you reading that. We ask you to do that. Uh, we will accept that. Is there a second? There is a second. So we now have a motion to amend the platform that has been seconded. At this time, I will um, open it up for debate on that motion to amend. If somebody wants to, be, to speak, if I can't tell who the board is. For sure, I just have to hit one button. The parliamentarian just asked for qual uh, uh, clarification as to the exact, we understand what you're proposing. We've got that for the writing. We just want to make sure we're clear. Um, if you can start page in the line, you're starting to strike from to the page in the line where you're ending. We you know what you're proposing. We just want to make sure we're clear on what you want to remove. So I'd ask the delegate if you could come and just, yeah. Do you have it? I have one of those. Though. They're really oh, yeah. nice. We've got, we've got the insertion. The, the, if you can I, just I tell us what you have, you can just tell us where you're trying. 
Yes, sir, if you would, you would go for it. Just tell us the page in line you're starting the strike and the page in line you're ending the strike, and then we'll be ready for debate. Parliamentarian just wanted, and Secretary wanted clarification. Thank you, sir. Yes. On uh, page P21, I'm asking to strike the part beginning with the Texas solution, ending where it says, as a defendant, right before the next section on foreign policy. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the Secretary have that? We now have that. Thank you. So now we are ready to proceed uh, for debate on the motion to amend. Uh, I see green and reds all over the place. So <laughs> let me take uh, the author, it took them a while by the way, has the a preferential the plank right to speak first under Robert's rules. And I don't actually believe oh, no. I gave him a chance Alex, to no. advocate for him. So if I'm going to afford the delegate so. I've the seen you around with your hat all day. Yeah, 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 the, 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 the chair will bring you an additional <laughs> three minutes to do so, sir. Yes, the, the main reason I would be in favor of this uh, is a very important issue. It needs to be addressed quickly. Um, I've been told by a few people that in some of the committee meetings it was kind of put off to the end and then rushed through. Uh, we don't need to do that anymore. It's an issue that needs to be discussed and debated. Um, and this needs to be done because the illegal what immigration in issue is there. a drain With on all of our yes, government they can add those. They don't need um, to It costs us more point. in taxes, it costs us more in enforcement, and there's a lot of things that are not fair to uh, legal immigrants who do what they're supposed to do and follow the legal <laughs> process. So that's yes. why I would be in favor I of the amendment. That. That's why I feel that it's very important. Thank you, Chairman. We will now get somebody to speak against the amendment. I'll recognize microphone number one. Hey, Whoa. folks, delegates at the microphone, will you please remember what we just said when we started? Thank you. I'm going to, everybody's going to get a chance to talk. Everybody take it down a notch. All right, because microphone one is a little, literally a hot mic, let me go to, let me go to microphone number two, and I'm going to recognize the delegate who has a red that is going to speak against the amendment to strike and replace. And I would ask the sergeant at arms of microphone one to turn that off because I can hear you guys arguing. And I'm going to go to number two and listen to the person with the red that wants to speak against the amendment. Delegate, please state your name, your senatorial district, and you may proceed. Art Martinez, SD19. Mr. Chairman, uh, I was a member of the platform committee that dealt with this section. Uh, I'd like to let the body know that we have two days of open testimony. Uh, we had members present from the, our business community, from the Border Watch militiamen, uh, and everyone in between. Yes. Uh, the, 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 this platform plank passed unanimously, and I think people need to understand the background of it. Uh, the universal frustration among everybody in the room was present, uh, and including the frustration that nothing is getting done. And so the, the, the sentiment of both the testimony and the resolutions we heard from the various districts was for us to put forth a conservative free market and liber li limited government approach <laughs> to immigration so that we can lead uh, the nation. That's why this plank is called the Texas Solution. Certain specific issues such as uh, no in-state tuition and, and those types of things were put in those appropriate areas such as education. Uh, but it's important to understand that uh, uh, this proposal is a solution that we uniquely in Texas can put forth because we have the largest amount of border of any state. We live with That's this problem day to day. And for everybody here present, I think we can all agree that the status quo is not an acceptable situation. Uh, I think what we, what we need to do is learn from our mistakes of the past. We know that we've had a health care issue for, for decades, and yet all we did was make statements about it. And what we got was Obamacare. On this situation, the 2010 language is merely a statement of frustration, a statement of the issue, uh, and maybe an accurate statement, but it doesn't put forth a viable solution. And if we don't put forth a solution, we're going to end up with a lot of great issues. Yes. We don't want a lot of great issues. So we need to lead on this issue. Texas needs to take a lead on this issue. That's what this plank is about. It's not about amnesty or any of that kind of stuff. 
sign for us to, to show the nation how to fix this problem, take leadership, so we can move beyond this and get Obama out of the White House and restore America. Thank you. And just say the other words that goes with it now. I think I've been ignoring uh, this side of the room, uh, so I'm going to go over here now. And uh, I see a green on microphone four. Uh, the delegate will identify themselves in their senatorial district. You uh, may proceed in uh, stating why you're in favor of the motion to amend. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jack Finger from SD26. I am in favor of this. Uh, amendment that this gentleman has proposed, the idea of restoring the 2010 language back, replacing what you, the committee is proposing. And here's the reason. Look at page 21. Look at the immigration section, the Texas solution. Read that paragraph. It, it shows, yes, we don't like uh, amnesty, but it, it, in essence, it's saying we're giving up on the enforcement. It's saying no. massive deportation of the individual. No, that's handled over here. To me, that's giving up. They obviously yeah. didn't read the whole thing, then, did they? Quote, we see common they ground to develop an advantage. They're not, they're looking at this one section, not Sir, reading the rest of it that encompasses exactly what they're talking about. Common ground? I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. You do not try... So then we're going to have redundancies if they don't do this. Criminals. Oh, my goodness. So, yes, we had this I problem in Louisiana. For this amendment that restores the 2010 language. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, let's be civil today. Well, now, uh, recognize somebody speaking against the amendment. I, there's, uh, I almost ignored the side of the room again. I'm sorry, folks. I'm, I'm right-handed. Um, <laughs> well, that is... The microphone three has a red light, which is against the amendment. The delegate is recognized. Please state your name, your senatorial district, and then you may proceed in speaking against the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Brad Bailey from SD11. Uh, I speak against this amendment. I'm a member of the uh, Temporary Platform Committee and the Permanent Platform Committee. We spent many, many hours of open delegation. We had the business community. We had the Minutemen Militia president there. They've never agreed in 15 years of coming together. We came together and had an open discussion about this. And when we finished with all the testimony that we had, every single person was heard until they didn't even stop talking. And we listened to them. Everyone agreed 100% that they wanted a solution, not rhetoric. Amen. Solutions. We don't prove rhetoric. We've proven that. These are the solutions. With the what? Texas These Energy Policy. I mean. We've proven that with lawsuit reform. We've proven that with like voter to make ID. An and we've proven that with our moving economy. I think what would be funny would be to make I an amendment. I want to separate fact versus fiction. Please pull out your platform and start right reading here this all over Page again. by page. Number one, and then page go through two, part of giving achieve 100% border security. security. Read that. Sections. Page lines number are two, bad. only citizens would be counted in the Census Bureau taking. Oh, now he's doing it. Okay. Page number three and four, Texas driver's license indicate that if a driver is a U.S. citizen and not allowing DL to be issued to anyone not legal in the United States. Yes. See, Page exactly. number five. Supporting Texas voted law requiring proof of U.S. citizenship. Page number seven, English as the official language. Page number seven, opposing any form of human trafficking. Supporting welfare reform, denying benefits to non-U.S. citizens. Page number 12, higher education requiring proof of citizenship for in-state tuition no U.S. citizen not eligible for state, federal, grant, or loans. Texas residents given accepted priority over foreign students. Page number 12. Public schools. We encourage legislation to prohibit enrollment of non-U.S. citizens in Texas public schools. Page number 12. Oppose public funding of foreign culture schools that we have in Houston, Texas. And have uh, non-U.S. citizens as principals. Page number 13. Page number 14. We support a Texas 
volunteer state militia of armed citizens. Page number 19, we support American jobs as a priority. Page number 21, strong language of birthright citizenship in the 14th Amendment that reflects the 2010 plan. Facts versus fiction. No, 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 no. On page 21, we said as Texans, we want solutions, not rhetoric. We're better than that, we can produce it, but we still have the strong language of the 2010 platform. I urge you to knock this minute down. Yeah. on the back part of your seat. The green, I just had a red. The green uh, is microphone four. That would be a speaker in favor of the amendment. The delegate is recognized. Stuff. Please state your name. Yeah, I know the president. You saw me earlier. My name is Art Bedford. I'm from Senatorial District 3. Oh, oh, oh. I'm probably seeing it. Out of order. As a member of the Texas Board of Volunteers, I travel monthly to the border area to assist the Border Patrol on private branch land. I know firsthand of the devastation that illegal immigration causes to farmers and ranchers in Southeast Texas. If we are truly committed to conservative policies, we need to articulate our policies clearly this 2012 plank on immigration is ambiguous at best and liberal at worst. Really? When, when someone violates our borders and enters our country illegal, he is not an undocumented individual. He's an illegal alien. Well, if then I'm, make the motion to amend the amendment. And law-based approach to immigration issues well, means to go back to the ending motion. sanctuary make cities and mandating the use Some of the e-verify really program, rule, the they rule. clearly they could, they say could, it. They could do exactly what they the want to do. The 2012 immigration plank does. Thank you. I sometimes almost want to get down there and help these people out and say, I'd like to make a motion to support the gentleman. We have one more person against because we've had more people speaking in favor just in case somebody is uh, calling for the question. I'm trying to be even on this debate because I can see emotions are very passionate, so I'm going to take one more oppose the amendment on uh, microphone one, and then I will go to the white light. I'm Norman Adams, Senate District 15, and I have been here watching this platform committee work since Monday to 11 o'clock at night, and I echo what Mr. Bailey said. We have covered every single point of enforcement. If we had our way about it, our special forces would cross the border and go after the drug lords. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, you have an opportunity right here that no Republican convention in Texas has ever had. Every two years, we come to our convention and we work hard on these platforms. But all we have done on the immigration plank is to create a litany or a list of the problems, and they are problems. This convention has the opportunity to actually adopt a solution. Yes. And it is properly titled on page 21, it is the Texas, Texas solution. solution. Ladies and gentlemen, I go quite often before Hispanic organizations and chambers of commerce, and they love us on our pro-life plan. They love us on our traditional marriage. We have been a laughing stock on our immigration plan. Approve this plan. Vote this motion down. God bless you. the sergeant of arms from exerting yourself too much further to get my attention. Uh, number one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Eric Stratton from uh, yes, SD5. Uh, point of information. Uh, when the uh, this issue was uh, being debated and discussed, and it sounds like an awful lot was put into this, but I'm just curious, were any members of the National Republican Hispanic Assembly involved, uh, or any, any uh, of the Hispanic leaders of the uh, Republican Party of Texas involved in the crafting of 
the Texas solution. If you could just uh, expound on that, I'd be interested. That would be a, 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 a question to be directed to the platform chair, and I'm going to. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I'm going to ask. You're welcome, sir. And ask Mr. Meckler to respond to the point of inquiry, please. Sir. Well, with my preference would be, Mr. Chairman, if I could defer that question to Art Martinez, who was the chairman of the subcommittee, if he could answer that. Let's keep deferring it. I don't know the answer. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Art Martinez of Art. Uh, we did have uh, input from members of the Federation of Hispanic Republicans, uh, and we had several individual members uh, uh, of the Republican Party speaking on their own behalf. All right, uh, I see some blue lights, which could be motions. So, well, now there's a white light. So I promise I take your point to order after we have a little bit of debate. Uh, there is a white light over here on three. So I'll recognize the delegate if you uh, have a motion that is an interview. I have a point of, point of information. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Tullis, SD12. Uh, my question to you is that the motions coming up to the mics now, should they all be germane to this particular plank? Yes. So anything that's in order at the mic should be moved up in the order of motions? It's not the order of motions. It's under Robert's rules. Let me just going to back up. The entire platform is under discussion, so you can discuss anything. However, when somebody makes a motion, you can only discuss the motion or make a motion or an amendment germane to the motion. Because we do have a motion on the floor, and that motion on the floor pertains just to the immigration plank and just to the specific words regarding the Texas solution, only debate pertaining to that motion right now is allowed, and any motions have to pertain only to the motion to strike and replace. That's the I, answer to your inquiry. There's another uh, white light. I will take that now on white. If you have an intervening motion, please state your name and senatorial district. Microphone one has a white light for an intervening action. If you don't, please turn off the white light. And no, I agree. That's okay. Y'all don't need to have the mics on while y'all are talking. And is is uh, is oh, the white lights on one again? Do you have an interview? Do you have a point of order? Chairman. Yes. Sonia McMaster's from Senate District Five. I have been a very very strong grassroots Hispanic Republican for y'all, and what I was told that nothing was changing. This whole wording has been changed from the platform from 2010. Ma'am, do you have a point of order? My point, point of order, order was that someone asked Tom, why weren't we Hispanic Republicans involved in changing this word? Asked about a particular group. Well, that's the point of inquiry. I understand it. And the question is to the chair of the platform, why weren't the Hispanic groups involved? And I'll let Mr. Becker respond. Okay, my response to you is that some members of the Hispanic community have been involved. To my knowledge, there was not a checklist that was generated. Uh, so the public testimony was open to everybody. And there was two days of testimony in the subcommittee and an hour and a half of testimony an issue in front of the to general committee on Wednesday, which we did take everybody that came forward that wanted to testify. And I'll, I'd like to ask Mr. Meck for a follow-up. Was every delegate, was it possible for any delegate at this convention to come testify? Mr. Chairman, every delegate was available, it was invited to come. Uh, they could have come and spoke whenever they did. In fact, we even had time available last night for 30 minutes to accommodate every delegate in this convention. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, on microphone number three, is, is that the white one? Oh, it's blue. Well, if there is a motion, it has to pertain to the, um, the motion to amend only. And I will, I will recognize the, the delegates. And please don't, do, do us a favor, just don't shout out. That'd be very helpful. The, the third microphone uh, had a blue motion. If you have a motion pertaining to the topic of the amendment, I will recognize it. And no, there isn't one. All right. There is another blue motion over here on one. If you have a motion, it has to be a true motion pertaining 
to the amendment, be prepared to have the exact language line, and don't forget to write it out for the secretary. The delegate is recognized. They Yvonne Markham, Parker County, SD 30. Can you maybe back away from the microphone? <laughs> no. <laughs> you go, girl. Home of the Parker County Peaches want to call for the vote. I promise you, you don't have to shout those motions for them still to be valid. Um, there's a motion to call a question. Is there a second? All those in favor of calling the question, signify by saying aye. Cookie, anyone? All those opposed, say nay. Right, the motion carries. We're now going to vote on the amendment, so I hope everybody's clear on this. The amendment would replace the language that Mr. Uh, Mr. Meckler presented in his platform committee with the language from the 2010 platform that the gentleman read. Everybody understand what we're voting on? So an I, an I changes the proposed platform to the language of the, uh, that the gentleman read. A nay would keep the platform language. I hope everybody's clear on that. If they are, all those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye! All those opposed? No! Those have it. Anybody else need to be heard on the platform? There is a, uh, a motion uh, on microphone three. The chair will recognize that delegate. Please state your name. Did you hear me? The chair recognizes the delegate and microphone for you. Please be ready to go because the plane is in the air. Where they need to be so that way they can be properly addressed by the chair. My name is John Malone from Senate District 1. Given our past passing of the Texas solution, I move to amend that solution by striking mass deportation of these individuals, that sentence, until it ends in law, and to add in point four, and after the words currently available, to read as so, these temporary workers would have to start the process from the country that they are citizens of. No person would be, no person would be granted temporary work in the United States that was not in the United States legally. That is my motion. Yes, sir, and do us a favor if you'll write that out word for word twice. Copies. Fine. Just give it to the secretary. Oh, he was prepared after uh, that long. I, I really do have you. Uh, <laughs> is there a second? There is a second. We now have on the floor an amendment to the uh, Texas solution that we, and we will now entertain debate on this new amendment. Uh, I see a, well, first of all, the author has preferential right to speak in favor of his own amendment. Does he wish to do so? If so, I will grant him an additional three minutes. I think your name We're going to be on it a little well, while. I hope I had that right. Do you wish to be heard again? What well, we there is definitely in this convention not a unanimous decision regarding our previous or the previous striking of the whole of, the, of this whole Texas solution. What I want to point out is we're looking, as this even says, for a compromise. I think most of us realize that there is bad will in this solution that is towards a liberal leaning. Please don't boo folks or yell at me. Let's, let's, let's be civil. Everybody has a right to their opinion. You may go ahead. This, this thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This, as we heard, our Hispanic delegate, the Hispanics were not considered. The devil is in the details. There is going to cause, this will cause harm to individuals on both sides of the border. There are ways to deal with our immigration problem. We have to go after the true crux. 
of this issue. I see some problem with the way that he worded what he said, being that he wants to he wants to add in a section saying they had to be here legally to begin Iraq. with. And if they get one of these visas, they have to be basically on their visa, all that originally. But you can also come here legally through other visas, like temporary yes. visas, except for visiting, uh, K-2 visas for coming for marriage. And, and that's, he could word that a little better. I don't like it. Coming from a family where I was in, my mother immigrated, I was born in, in, in an Air Force base. You know, that's a, those immigration is touchy, I understand. I live two miles from the Rio Grande. Uh oh. I am the Texas president of Minuteman Civil Defense Corps. I have conducted border watches along the Rio Grande. I have participated in border watches in Balfouris, all the way across of Texas to El Paso. I've oh. also worked well, you met border one a while ago, near Tucson, so. Arizona, and east of San Diego, California. All I have heard for the last six years is rhetoric. Okay. Everybody's got an opinion, but nobody wants to do anything positive. This committee started out on Monday and started talking about straightening out immigration laws. And one of the committee members asked the question, how do I sell this to my conservative friends? I raised my hand, filled out a piece of paper, and it was my first presentation to the subcommittee. I said, I'm a conservative identified who I am and what I do, and said the first thing you got to do is secure the border. Yeah. If you don't secure the border first, I don't care what else you want to propose. That goes we along have a with line the right here that says secure our borders. Platform. Oh I don't care goodness. if you don't secure the border. And a lot of conservatives feel the same way. This committee said, okay, that's the first thing we're going to do. You have fun with and that sleep that thing. Well, I don't know what that is. And then the ideas start flowing. Oh, no problem. When was the Social Security card last changed? 1947. It's never been changed. It's the same thing it was in 1935. What is the most forged <laughs> document in the United States? The Social Security Card. Somebody made a suggestion we need to do something about that. It's in this platform because it's a, it's a solution, not more rhetoric. Birthright. When we start talking about anchor babies, everybody got their constitution out, and we started reading the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment doesn't say anchor babies are the rule of the land. Your, your three minutes is up. I'll grant, grant you an extra 15 seconds just to wrap up. Also, the work program, uh, they have to work for somebody that will collect taxes. That doesn't happen now. They have to do, go through criminal background checks. This is a complete program. It's not a mismatch of paragraphs scattered throughout the platform. Thank you. There is a light light which could be entered in the motion. Microphone three. I'm sorry, it's green. Well, we can go with green. That would be the next in order. Uh, so I'll take the green, which is in favor of the amendment, and then the delegate will identify themselves in Senator Burns Delegate Bernstein, Senate District 16. Uh, this sentence that this amendment wants to strike in the paragraph under Texas Solution, uh, it really highlights what the issue is. In 2010, 
This convention felt that no amnesty in any form leading to citizenship was appropriate. And somewhere in 2012, when the chairman of this committee said that he wasn't really changing things, he was just substituting things, we, we've changed to allowing amnesty and saying that, that um, it would not make sense to deport these people. Uh, while people might feel like did this you do is what a me and Ian did earlier. in 1986, when I was aware of this issue because my mother was working against illegal immigration mightily, the simpson missoli Act was supposed to be the complete solution. And we know what happens to it. So this sentence in particular is a little bit absurd to think that a half a page is going to solve the problem. And this sentence is, needs to be struck in order to get back to the intent of this committee and, and this convention in 2010. And I believe that the intention of this convention is to continue that policy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sir. The, uh, the chair will recognize the delegate to speak against the amendment on microphone to state your name, Senator or District 20. Juan Martinez, Senate District 19. I just wanted to testify a little bit about what we heard in the committee. First, uh, everyone was in complete agreement that the 1986 amnesty was a failure precisely because the Democrats promised border security along with the amnesty. And President Reagan later regretted that, which is why the number one plank in this solution is border security. Secure the borders first. Secondly, nowhere does it say that a guest worker is a path to citizenship. It simply gets them some form of legal status so that we can eliminate this mar uh, black market economy uh, of 10 million people yes. that allows people to work without paying taxes, that allows criminality, that forces taxes, people into the underground, and, and is the matrix through which legally and drug traffickers and criminals survive. And so, requiring people to leave the country in order to get the guest worker visas cuts at the heart of, of, of a solution that would actually work. Someone who's uh, an immigrant here from El Salvador is not going to voluntarily return to El Salvador. So by adding this type of language, what you're going to do is continue the current system. And we all know that the current system, the current status quo, is unacceptable. That's why this idea was debated and rejected in the subcommittee unanimously. And lastly, on the issue of Hispanic organizations, we heard uh, poignant testimony by Artemio Muniz Jr., who's the uh, 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 state chairman of the Federation of Hispanic Republicans, which is an official auxiliary of the Republican Party of Texas. And what he explained to us is that the Federation of Hispanic Republicans is not an organization that separates itself. It is not an organization whose members are just Hispanic or Latino. Their the purpose is because they reject racial identity politics. Their organization is to be the arm or the branch of the party that reaches out into the Hispanic community and bring them into the party. And that their membership requirement requires all members to, pre to be a member of another organization, a Republican woman, a Republican man, and a, a packager, because we need to strive towards the day where the Federation of Hispanic Republicans is no longer necessary. Thank you. And so, the, and so the, there were Americans of Hispanic descent we testified, and very few of them were represented by a Hispanic organization because we don't believe in racial politics. Thank you, sir. There's a motion that will recognize on uh, microphone two, the blue motion. The delegate state is motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Belenowitz, SDA, I will move call the question and end debate. Is there a second to the motion? Yes. All those in favor of ending debate signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. We'll now move on the issue of the amended motion. Oh wow, uh, that is all those in favor of right? the amendment to the platform. <laughs> please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The noes have it. All right. The uh, anybody else wish to be heard on the platform? There is a motion on two. So please state your motion. Corey Shipman. Uh, Shipman, Senate District 12, fifth generation Texan. I move that we add language to page three. 
The line should read, EPA, we believe the Environmental Protection Agency should be abolished. You need to put the exact page and exact line number and don't forget to write it out and duplicate and deliver it by the secretary. Right. Okay, can you give us the page? The page is three. I propose that we insert this right above homestead protection. We have it. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? There's a motion on the floor to amend the platform. However, there is a white light which could be an intervening action. The chair will recognize the delegate for the purpose of an intervening action on microphone three. It needs to be germane to the motion regarding the EPA. This is, I am Nick Edwards from Senate District 25. And my question is to, on page 21, under immigration, the Texas solution. That's not, is that an order that's not germane to the motion is on the EPA? You're out of order. All right. There is a blue light motion on one. I will listen to the delegate. Please state your name, Senatorial District, and state your motion. Is microphone one ready? Dr. Stephen Hotze, Senatorial District 17. Is the motion in order? Only if it pertains to the motion on the Environmental Protection Agency. Otherwise, it's out of order. I yield. All right. All right, there is a motion, a blue motion on three. This, folks, this has to pertain to the EPA motion. Otherwise, you're just wasting everybody's time. All right. The, no, they're all gone now. Great. Well, yeah, they're all gone. No other lights are ready to move to the question. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. The platform is amended. The chair recognizes a light for motion on microphone two. Mr. Chairman, I wish to add to the Texas solution under immigration. What I would like to do is to add the following language, which will give more teeth to what was just passed. Whereas identity theft is used by felons, illegal aliens, and others for the purpose of hiding their true identity or their illegal presence in the United States. And whereas identity theft costs billions each year and a great deal of damage to the credit ratings and reputations of those whose identities are stolen. Whereas public funds are used to pay for all government services and government hires employees or utilizes contractors to provide services. We therefore urge the state legislature to mandate the use of the federal E-Verify system for checking the identity of all workers to include the employees of contractors who provide services to city, county, and state governments to include all projects, whether solely funded by the state of Texas or any subdivision or jurisdiction or projects using federal funds. Such legislation should provide for private legal action to assure compliance. Thank you. Please reduce that to writing. In the future, you don't need the whereases. That will just take time, but I'll recognize the motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? I don't hear a second. There is a second. Somebody says they can hear all the questions. Did I really hear all the questions? Everybody always wants to be fair. Microphone three. Did somebody on microphone three try to call the questions? Did you call the questions? That takes practice. I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear them. If you want to call the question, you either need to shout it out or you need to go to the microphone. There is a call to question. All right, second. There's been a motion to call the question. Not debatable. All those in favor of calling the question, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? We will now be voting on the gentleman's amendment. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. 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 Aye
close now. No! And it failed. And, and folks, if I could just kind of tell you something, I kind of have a feeling which way most of the no, stuff on immigration is going from the previous four votes. If y'all still want to debate and put motions, that's fine. Me. But just kind of keep that in mind that it comes a point in time you can kind of predict what the bottom is going to do. And just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. The, the, there's a motion uh, recognized on microphone two. Mr. Chairman, my name is Mary Lynn Thurston Schlager, and I'm from Parker County, Senate District 30. I'm on page 13 at the bottom of the page under education. Foreign culture charter schools in Texas. Is that Ms. Ginsburg? The last word it is Ms. Ginsburg. of principles. I would strike principles and replace with public school trustees. Yes, and if you'll write that out and duplicate and give it to Mandy, we would appreciate it. I'll accept that motion. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. The motion has been made and second. I will now entertain debate on the You know what? Just to be fair to people, I'm just going to ignore that for two responses and then I'll pretend like I heard it. Just to be fair to people. All right. First, I'll let the author have a preferential right to speak for the amendment. I'll let one person uh, speak against it and then my hearing will return. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Please go in, in addition to being a delegate, Let's just don't give the her education speech liaison again, and vice president for Texas Eagle Forum, I volunteer for the last eight sessions living in Austin on my own dime so that I can lobby as a volunteer for Texas Eagle Forum and family issues. I worked on this issue uh, foreign uh, people coming to America on H-1B visas and operating some of our charter schools here in Texas. We have 37 such charter campuses that are operated by, some of, many of them are operated by Turkish men here on H-1B visas. I commend her spirit. Our local I really do, because I saw her, her little speech at the CEC. I commend her for you know, what she does. Who are elected are required to be American citizens. She's talking about, um, and yeah, all I'm I actually have her material in my bag. Operators, not our charter school principals, She's a teacher but our charter operators uh, be American citizens. If we drop the requirement for Good Our local should be public people school to teach elected children. officials to be American citizens. I'm wondering if everyone would She's basically agree saying to what that. We do at the state so I'm just asking you to teachers for the public school have to be American citizens. So should the people who are trustees. operating these other I schools. Then that's Thank what I'm like to commend. To be fair, I'll take one does. person that's against. Everything she says. I don't see any lights on that. I'll assume there isn't. So now She's my hearing has returned. If somebody wants to say that, I'm going back in history. The question has been called. Is there a second? All those in favor of calling the question say aye. Aye. Those opposed? We're now moving to the amendment from the uh, lady delegate that you heard. All those in favor of the amendment to signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. It passes. The amendment to the platform passes. That was at the end of uh, page 11. Did you say? Or was it one of the. Well, we can't call the question until there is one, sir. <laughs> Oh, on the entire question. Yes, that is in order. There has been a motion to call the question on the entire platform as amended. Is there a second? It's non-debatable. Right now we're just voting on cutting off debate on any more on the platform. And then we'll go to vote the platform and then he may or may not be finished. So, all those in favor of ending debate on the platform signify by saying aye. All those opposed? No! Ayes definitely have it. We're now moving to. This is the question of whether the platform passes or not, and then we're done tonight. All, the, all those in favor of the platform signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Platform clearly passed. Thank you, Chairman. That concludes the report of the Department of 
platform today. Thank you. We, we got it done. Do you need this a place to great stay? exercise in the market. You sure? We're right down the road. I have, y'all can leave if you can listen to the announcements. Reminder, SREC, 7.30 in the morning. Room 102. You have to be there. We have to canvass the votes. We have another announcement. If you need to return a rental scooter, please return it to room 103B. If you need to return a rental scooter, please return it to room 103B. One final announcement. This was left. I'm not quite sure what this is. It says Cannon Power Shot. It's a case. It has something in it. Somebody's left The chairman becomes lost uh, and found. I just want to say, as you leave, and I'm going to call the session no, out there. concluded, uh, I could have been more proud of the way that the Texas Republican Party conducted itself. I don't have to see anything on my side. Thank you, and good night to along day.